Will Robinson here from Robinson's Auto. Welcome back. Well, as you can tell, we are not at Robinson's Auto. We are actually in upstate New York. Started yesterday working on another truck that's not going to be in this video. It was a Dodge Ram. But long story short, we finished up troubleshooting that. I was putting all my tools away. I brought everything along. The Alltel, the Launch, the uh, Tech 2. I brought the Arsenal with me just in case I needed it. Well, luckily I did because as I was putting everything away, a customer pulled in and said that her Trailblazer, her 2008 Trailblazer, the battery light came on, the uh, charging gauge went down to near zero, the temperature gauge stopped working, the radio stopped working, all while she was on her way home, and it's nighttime. And uh, as soon as Dino looked in, he seen the battery light on and the, the gauge close to zero, and he goes, oh, it needs an all That was an easy, easy one. But the headlights were on and they were, they were bright. So I'm like, Dina, how about we grab a, a meter and see what this thing's putting out? And this is where I want to recreate this issue and take you guys back along. I want to give a special thanks to Keith from New Level Auto. You know why they put a fence around the graveyard like that? Why? Because people are dying to get in there. <laughs> Let's see what kind of trouble we get ourselves into. All right, so I have this 2008 Trailblazer 4.2. This is exactly how it came in. Everything's hooked back up the way we we're going to recreate it. This was the customer complaint. Vehicle running, battery lights on, ABS, brake light, airbag, all the gauges are pretty much reading zero. So the first thought was, okay, maybe it's not charging but as you can see how bright the headlights are, that was kind of the first giveaway. And then when we went to, I always like putting the windows down before I shut it when the vehicle was running and the, the windows weren't working. And, uh, checking the voltage, as you can see it's charging. So it's charging fine, headlights are nice and bright, but yet none of the gauges are working. So the next thing we did was try to communicate with a scan tool. The first thing I found out was I tried using just a wireless communication interface for the Altel, and I could not communicate to anything. The BCM, uh, ECM, nothing would communicate. We just sit there. And then I got out the 2534. We'll just skip right to this. We're going to auto select. Read. Okay. This is further than I can get with this small interface. Uh, it does have navigation radio. Uh, manual. 2008 light truck, Chevy 4.2, yes. Diagnostics, auto scan. Now, as you can see, it's only it only brought up the engine control and the transmission. Same codes as we had yesterday. Lost communication with BCM and the dash, the DIM. This is what's very alarming, is our class two data, which uh, all of our other modules are on, but we're not communicating with any of them. So none of the other ones were coming up in that list in addition to the BCM. So there's a few different ways we could go about this. I just wanted to give you a quick reference on what we're dealing with with the GM Class 2 network. 
it's a single wire network and you have all your control modules meeting up at a central location so as an example JX205 is going to be a, a splice connector and you'll see that your BCM your body control module is coming up meeting up on M then you have your power control module meeting up on B transfer case control module meeting up there on G I believe it is and then we have a HV, uh, HVAC control module meeting there on L so essentially all your control modules are going to meet up on a single wire network okay so if anything were to go wrong on this network and uh, say short the ground and pull it low like I believe we're seeing or high you would see this network go dead so moving forward to our demonstration from yesterday we're gonna switch over to the Tech 2 at this time so bring up the Tech 2 here can you see We're going to go to Diagnostics, 2008, uh, light truck, Chevy, I think it's an S, Trailblazer. We want to go down to Vehicle Control System, 4.2, Navigation, Now we want to go down to class 2 monitor, message monitor. Okay. And as you can see, it's just showing nothing. I can try pinging all. We'll try to ping all modules. And there's, there's nothing on that network coming alive. Nothing active. Alright, so what do we do next? So what we got to determine is if we could communicate to any one of these modules. Okay, so next we wanted to locate the splice packs. This essentially jumpers everything together on that network. They're all connected to one, one location. There's a comb that's in there and you're going to see this here shortly. When you disconnect that, it's like taking all those wires and separating them. So we want to find its location but we also need this pin out it'll be very important because every pin will tell you what it does so pin A is our DLC class 2 serial data link and then you would see like B's for your PCM and your automatic transmission and your digital radio ABS and so on they're all the modules on this splice pack JX205 where's JX Oh, right here down in the splice pack. JX205. Accessible through the removable panel when the driver's door is open. Okay, so that little panel underneath. We'll take and we'll remove that, gain access to this. And then we'll start seeing seeing what's taken on the network, hopefully. You can monitor the network with the breakout box. Okay. But I didn't have the breakout box with me. But what you could do then is uh, we know it's pin number two, but if you looked at the connector view you'll see and I'll, I'll show you in a minute it'll tell you what your class 2 network wire is and then you can hook your oscilloscope right up at that point and also uh, hook your scan tool up on most breakout boxes we're gonna take and we're gonna remove this panel uh, it's just a little kick panel seven millimeter okay so with this panel drop down you'll have a right here's your connector you're gonna take and pop that out one we're after and this white part up here is your comb and we're going to take and unplug that so as you see it that's why we call it a comb because it essentially looks like a comb and it pretty much is a solid piece and it just jumpers everything together onto that onto that network and we have our purple wire here which is our our, our single wire that runs back and then everything else is our modules if that makes sense so my next demonstration you're gonna see a step in through how to isolate 
each one of these control modules and slowly bring them online one at a time. So now what we want to do is we want to connect one module at a time and see if we can communicate with the Tech 2 to that module. And then, uh, and then we'll just keep on going forward from there. Okay, so everything we're going to test off of it is jumping from A to the adjacent control modules. So say if we want to try to communicate with the BCM, we knew we couldn't communicate with the BCM earlier, so we could go from A down to M. You see how it's been trying now, it's just sitting there, but it's all inactive. Uh, BCM isn't even on there. So now we're going to jump um, A to M and see if we could bring just the BCM online. Does that make sense? Yep. So purple and light green. You got purple and light green. It's not good to front probe, but as long as you're careful, you'll be fine. As you can see, can you see that? Yep. The BCM just came active. So we know our problem isn't the BCM. Is that making sense, Nina? Yep. Each one of these, say this one here, goes to the BCM. This one here goes to the HVAC. This one here goes to the rear HVAC, and then your audio, and so on and so on. So, okay, yep. And this is your main one. So with all, all the control modules unhooked, now we could go from this purple wire and just bring one modular on at a time and see if it comes active on our scan tool. Okay. The first purple wire is our class two network. Yep. And this light green is the BCM. And we couldn't communicate with the BCM, that was the code we had. Yeah. So, okay. So I picked that one first, on the scan tool, it just came active. Okay. So now it's talking to the BCM. So we know that it's capable of talking to the BCM, and that's not not that's not what's bringing out. Yeah. Okay. So going back from there, let's see if we commu can communicate with the HVAC, which is the next wire over, and that is uh, that's L, and that's a white wire. That'd be here to the purple one. You gotta be very, very careful. Just touch, like I'm not pushing them into the connector. I'm just lightly touching, touching them. them. And as you can see, the ACM, HCM just became active. So we know that's not the one bringing down the network. Now we just work our way through this plug. The orange one was for the radio. Which this one, we found out yesterday it takes a wake up. You'd have to cycle the key to wake it up. Okay. So that one almost stuck us yesterday because it did not come active, but we unpinned it. But if I were to take and cycle the key, it would become active. Or let me try pinging. Oh, there you go. Radio just became active. Okay. I just had to ping it. Okay. Do you see that, Tammy? Yep. Okay, so we know it's not the radio. So if you see one that's not coming alive, ping it. And then, uh, just keep working our way back. A dark blue with white. And then we uh, we'll ping it again. And this is where we got to yesterday, and where we found that I could keep on going. Everything else is active. Um, you would just keep on repeating that process throughout each module. Okay. But once we got to this dark blue with white, we realized that we have no communication, even if we ping it or cycle the key. So that one is most likely the culprit, pulling down the network. Just to show you, I'll go to the next one over. Great. IPC just came active, right? Okay. See it on the scan tool? Yep. So we worked our way all the way through each module, and we found out that it's the dark blue with white, which is a serial communication circuit. So what that means is that it's not one of our common problems. So this one just got more interesting. Usually you could find like your ABS module or something pulling you down here. But now we're, we're, we have to go to the next splice pack. So everything up to this point, we were testing individual control modules like the BCM and whatnot. However, we get to this dark blue with white, 
and we can't get any activity, we're not getting any communication. That's taking us to coming from JX205, which we were just troubleshooting. Comes up here, JX306. And look what we have a whole nother set of control modules the VCIM vehicle communication interface, front passenger door module, memory seat module, lift gate module, driver's door module. So essentially, what we have to do now is locate this splice connector and do similar testing because there's another splice pack in the back that uh, we got to start going to um, what we did yesterday we we left the purple wire and the dark blue so we left the serial communication one jumpered and then we went back unplugged it and then slowly brought each each module online from that jumper pack but we later came to the conclusion let's just hook this back up plug back in our comb this is going to save us a little bit of time because we'll be able to see everything become active as you've seen everything that is on that line just became inactive again okay okay so if you can see what we got here we're at the BCM I'm hooked up to the data line the class 2 network it's a light green I think it's B1 but we should see activity. But we're seeing seeing nothing, it's pulled down. Okay, then we looked up our connector view. I'll put a picture in the video for you. And we found our next splice pack was under the passenger back seat. There's a spot in the carpet that you lift up, slide it back, pull it up, and you'll see that we have another splice pack. I left a pick up there, I'm gonna need that. So now, these are the remaining modules on that, uh, that network so we know it's nothing on the front one so now we're going to take in and unplug this one and we're going to keep moving forward doing the same test and as you can see the radio just came back on with this unplugged and we have activity now okay on our uh, on our line okay anyway as you can see as soon as we unplug this the network came back alive, came back to life on the other side. So now we got to see what is going on here. So now we need another connector view and pin out. So let me see my laptop for a minute. We need a JX306, and that's uh, beneath, like I, like I showed you. We brought up the connector location, told us exactly where it was beneath the seat under the carpet. And this gives us our communication circuit. So everything is going to be from the dark blue to testing each. So now we could we could look at the oscilloscope. But last night I wasn't looking at the oscilloscope when I did it. I just kept on pinging the uh, the network. So I'll just set this here for now. So we know blue, dark blue at white. We'll go from there, and then we'll go to the DDM, driver's door module, I believe, which is K, which is a brown wire. KK, so blue to K. So this way it makes it a little bit harder to see what we did. Actually, what we did last night made it easier to, to see because it, it took everything offline and we just brought one up on it at a time. At a time on, yeah. Yeah. But what we could do, if you were doing it like this, is, uh, is see which one takes the network down. So just keep on jumping each one until that, until that network came down. Does that make sense? Yep, okay. So if I just went... And jumped them, yep. If I just went here, I just kept on going down each one. 
There you go, it just went down. Yeah, everything just went inactive. So we just found out which, which module was taking it down. So we could simply just flip it over from there, see what color wire that is. It's the uh, light green and brown, which is the VCIM, the vehicle communication module. So that's a little different than we did it last night. Um, you see everything came back active. I'm just doing this so it tries to make sense for you, you know? Round. We should see the DDM on there now. Yeah, there's the DDM. DDM. Okay. So it just added to the list, even though it wasn't easy to find like that, but if I take it off, it just went inactive. Okay. You see how that works? Yep. So everything on this uh, splice pack isn't going to show active okay. on here. But as I bring one on at a time, Inactive. yeah, so if that's making sense. So essentially, we just want to find out what's bringing that network down. And now if we focus on the oscilloscope too, if I take an eye jumper, uh, the serial communication to uh, the VCIM, you'll see it automatically takes down your network. Thanks. Can you see that? Yep. Yeah. So, and then you just heard your radio and everything shut up. And then your dash would go crazy. And then you unplug it and everything and comes back to life. life. So essentially we got to locate where the VCIM is and, and unhook that. Okay, well easy enough, it's right here next to where we were working, coincidentally enough. So we're gonna just take and unplug this module, the VCIM. Okay, we're gonna hook our comb back up. And everything stayed active. And see how you have communication, communication back. Uh, take and ping everything. And everything that's on that list, you'll see now came up except for the VCIM. All right, so now, moment of truth. Okay, so don't be scared right away, but you see how, well, actually, Everything came back. You see how we have our voltage is reading now. Our oil pressure is down. Gas is staying empty. So let's take and cycle the key. Put the key back on. Okay, everything's back up. And there you go. Now it's charging. It was charging the whole time. But it just shows you how easy you can be misled. Uh, there was almost an alternator thrown at it. I'm almost certain that if we weren't here today, that's probably what would have happened. But as you can see, that was the culprit. But we're really not done yet. We should make sure we have all of our correct powers and grounds. So let's go do that. I hate to really make the call that quick, but uh, Usually if you have just good powers and grounds, really shouldn't take down the network on, on anything else. The last something was shorted. So we'll make sure nothing is shorted across the tube. So we got uh, pin seven and eight is our ground. Uh, pin seven and eight will be next to each other, black wires. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna actually use a, a test light. That way it's a, a loaded circuit. We're gonna take and hook the test light up to positive. Because mm. we're gonna be checking grounds, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. I just want to make sure <coughs> certain. my test 
test later. I like the load to grounds. Good. Now you can do this with a voltmeter or, or oscilloscope, but you're not really loading the ground. You see that one's good. Now we're going to check the power. That's going to be, i got to hook this up to the ground now. Uh, which one's 12 volt power? Positive supply is 15 and 16. Uh, orange and orange. Good. Good. All right, so our powers and grounds are good. We're just going to leave the, the VCIM unplugged for now. Um, that way the lady can have her car back. And uh, I'm not sure if they're going to replace it or not. But we're going to make the call with that. It needs a, a VCIM. I just realized that during our troubleshooting there, my ground got knocked off. So that's why it was it was looking a little a little weird. But now it looks much better. See how much better that waveform looks now? I I had when I sat my laptop over there, I must have knocked the ground off. Oh, okay. So I just want to re-show that one more time. All right, you got it back on. Yep. And our voltage is up where it belongs now. See how it pulls it right down? Pulls it right down. Yep. Everything drops out. Essentially, that's what you're going to see. As soon as you unhook the bad module or whatever it might be, everything will start communicating and you're, you're back up and running. But that's what a good waveform should, uh, should look like. And yes, I'll take and put some liquid tape on this Pearson where I pierced it. So no worries. All right, guys. Hope that made sense. Put everything back together now. Up front. I could finish this off with the Tech 2. Go through this one more time. It's not going to communicate with the VCIM, so any of your uh, your like serious radio and uh, stuff like that, is, it's not going to work. But you'll see that we'll, uh, we now when we communicate, we have everything's back up, except for the VCIM. We'll be missing. What we'll do is hook the launch back up, and, or the Alto. I can show you that. Uh, now we're auto scanning everything. We'll have to clear everything out. But as you can see, all the modules are now. You'll see how many is in the system. They'll probably all have something, communication codes in it. Which is fine. We'll go in there. We'll clear them all out. But as you can see now, everything is back up. Just out of curiosity. You'll probably find that there's a lost communication. You'll find that in every one that we go to. So we're gonna exit out. We're gonna do a quick re-race. Leave the key on, engine off. Up. 
I'm just going to do a quick scan. See if all the, everything's cleared out. Alright guys, well I hope you enjoyed that one. I know I truly did. Another special thanks to Keith from New Level Auto. He helped me step through all those procedures that you've seen over the phone and saved me many, many steps back and forth to the computer at the time. And then last night at the, the hotel room, we got everything together to, to make the video go a little bit smoother. So, uh, thanks man. Alright guys, have a good one.